Hey, did you hear? Did you hear we've got Darren Motamity back with us? All right. Woohoo! It's great to have him back as Odyssey every week dazzles us. And good morning to you. How are you? So far, so good, right? Welcome to the coolest place in Las Vegas. I see some of you brought your wraps and your sweaters. That's good, because you know how I can be in here. But I want to welcome all of you into this fabulous Center for Spiritual Living, where we believe it is always a perfect day. And because we are located in Paradise Township, it's a perfect day in Paradise. And so we're grateful to have you here. If you are here for the very first time, we do a spiritual embrace of you this morning. We consider you an honored guest. We're so glad that you joined us throughout the morning. We'll be singing songs together. The words will be up on the screen. There's a connection card inside your program. We'd love it if you would fill that out to the degree you feel comfortable with. It will help us know who you are, how you found us, and how we might uh, assist each other in staying connected together. If you want to try to come back a second time and continue to check us out, that would be great. If you're back a second time today, I'm so glad we made that connection. Welcome back. It's good to see you. And for those of us who are here a lot, isn't this cool? Isn't it great to be here? In fact, would you please say after me, good morning, God. It's a perfect day. Good morning, God. It's a perfect day. I am so glad to be here. I'm so glad to be here. Life is good. Life. And so it is. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, so before we launch into some announcements and some information to share with you, it is the first Sunday of the month, not only a big holiday birthday weekend for the nation, but birthdays. So if you made your appearance on earth in the month of July, if you have a birthday in July or a rebirth day in July, would you please rise up? We have a special, oh, come on up, come on up to my lovely vocal assistants. We're going to wait, wait, keep, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you amazing people who were born in the month of July, we're so glad you were born. Happy birthday to you. All right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, may I say that our brand new grandparents, Kelly and Chris Marshall and company, brought us some cupcakes for the birthdays today. Here are the featured flavors for July. Peppermint. Sugar cookie. Snowball. Strawberry. And black forest. <laughs> we don't need any drum beat on that. You guys are great. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. But you have to stay here until we're absolutely finished before you go over there and get that, okay? That would be terrific. All right, so some information to share with you. You will find this inside your program and or post it on the flyers you'll find on the doors, the windows, the mirrors, every place you go. Um, but uh, we do every single week have a Wednesday night experience. It's different every week. We have a great uh, deep team of people who are creating something magnificent for us every Wednesday. We call it the Wow Wednesday Experience. This Wednesday, Laura Hallett is creating an evening uh, centered on compassion. She's calling it Compassion, the Path to true freedom. And so Laura will be uh, doing a, a compassion meditation, World uh, Compassion Meditation Day is I think on the 11th. And so this is in, in um, honor of that. Justin will be here, I'll be here, and it'll be a great evening at seven o'clock. We precede that over in the great room with dinner. There's a buck, a bowl. So it's like every time you go to the window to receive a bowl of soup, it's only a dollar. And it's great soup, it's homemade stuff. It's always, there's always a huge variety. And if you can help provide that variety, we would love it. Tell our kitchen staff this morning that you are planning to bring soup some Wednesday and they will uh, notify our Wednesday night team that that's gonna happen. I don't see Laura anywhere. She was going to present this. So we're going to move ahead into our classes. They are starting this week. You'll see that July 7th, Tuesday, a class is starting called Meditation is More Than You Think. If you have a certificate, a certificated class uh, path that you're on, you can take it that way or you can take it without a certificate. So either way, uh, this class is open to everybody. It's going to be Tuesday evening starting at 6.30. It's an eight-week class, a survey class of many, many different types of meditation. Every night, you will uh, experience several different kinds of meditation. That starts at 6.30 on Tuesday. The Empower You table is in the lobby. Okay, it's going to be inside where it's cooler. So you can go out there and find out all about that class. Again, on Thursday, there's going to be a four-week class that Jeff, one of our ministerial interns, has created called Prayers of Our Fathers. It's going to take well-known, classic, uh, timeless prayers from different traditions and bring them into the contemporary uh, world uh, and uh, have us get a metaphysical understanding. Hi, Laura. How are you? You know, Laura's upstairs with our kids, and they got to try to time it to bring, come downstairs and be in the announcements, and 
I'm in the middle of classes. Do you want to do anything? Okay. <laughs> so Prayers of Our Father starts on Thursdays this week, and you can find out more about that at the Empower You table in the lobby as well. And then starting just next week for three Sundays, starting at 1145, we're going to have a membership orientation. If you are not yet a voting member of this center and want to find out what that is, what does it mean? Who, who, are, who are we as this center? What is our purpose and, and how do we operate? All of that information is available in this class. It's a free class for three Sundays. It's about two and a half hours each day. Um, and then you can decide, do I want to become a member or is it, not right, is it not the right time? We would love it if you'd sign up your intention in the lobby because we're trying to, we want to get the materials ready for all of us starting next Sunday. If you took a piggy bank uh, for to stuff with change and bills of high denominations, that's great. But please bring it in by next Sunday, July 12th. The pigs are ready to go to pasture for the summer, and uh, we would love it if you could just have that in so we can total all that up and um, have a magnificent uh, tally to give you soon. We do have, if you don't know it, we have a Sunday morning meditation from 9.15 to 9.45. Sabrina did a wonderful meditation this morning on uh, the, the boxes we place ourselves in and what, how are we ready to let go of those in the uh, interest of freedom. Um, I don't think I've missed a single one of these experiences. It really does help me get centered for my time of the morning. So that's starting at 9.15. Next Sunday, Reverend Richard Walter will be providing that uh, meditation. So consider coming early on Sundays. Finally, did you bring something delicious to eat today besides the cupcakes, which are delicious? If you did, please raise your hand. Wow, they're all at the back of the room because I think they want to, like, scatter and get over there before <laughs> to taste their own, except for Doris. But anyway, thank you for bringing something today. Um, and next Sunday, if your last name starts with A, B, C, D, or E, bring something delicious if, you, if, you, if that's something that works for you. If not, then consider asking someone that you find delicious to bring into our midst and to share with us in this experience and afterwards. So did anybody bring someone delicious today for the first time? Yeah? Okay. Somebody that we all know, but you still consider them delicious, yeah? That's good, too. That's awesome. So maybe do that. We can share this community with others in that way. So your support really does help us grow, and it helps us expand. And um, one of the big areas that you've been hearing more from lately is our youth ministry. Today, uh, they're exploring freedom and independence. The younger kids this morning are going to make pinwheels about what that piece of freedom means to them, and so they're going to have those pinwheels to enjoy later. And the older kids are going to be visioning this morning with Colleen Tanaka. It's a great practice, and they're going to be introduced to it this morning. It's going to be exciting. If you were here last week, you heard... Kaylee and Kyle present this new project. It's a summer project that our youth are spearheading. It is, uh, their goal is to collect and stuff 100 backpacks. And we're going to donate them right up the street to Rowe Elementary School, which is, right, it's a neighborhood school, so we're going to have an impact on our immediate neighborhood. If you can help with school supplies, there's a list at the Empower You table in the lobby, uh, a list of the supplies that we'll be putting into the backpacks, or if you can find backpacks, that would be great. I happened to stop in because I had heard that they can be found pretty inexpensive at Ross, Dress for Less sometimes. I found a really cute, pretty, nice backpack for $5.99, and so I brought that in for our kids. And so anything that you can provide, that's great. Our kids are going to be collecting as well. We're going to have a, a, a backpack stuffing event next, uh, next month that we'll all get to participate in. But this is something that our kids are, are learning about and spearheading, and it's exciting because we'll have a positive impact on our local community. So all of that is information for you to consider in uh, the ways that you shine the light of Center for Spiritual Living in your life. But let's all take in a deep breath now. Ah, let that breath out. Ah. So we're going to move now into our celebration. Our celebration always begins with music before the service starts and now as we enter into the celebration. We are going to sing together. So if and as you are able, I would love it if you'd stand up. We're going to sing America the Beautiful. How about that for, uh, for this time of the year? And the words are on the screen, and we're just going to have a magnificent time of it. Why don't I grab this? All right. All beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of rain, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain, America. 
take a couple minutes, shake a hand, get a hug, introduce yourself to the people you don't know this morning. Good morning, good morning. As we prepare to move into the invocation, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. And I see Carla's got my baby over here. Yay. So we're going to begin with this morning's uh, affirmation, which will be for the whole week. So it is in your program. It's also going to be on the screen. You may choose to cut it out, keep it with you, refer to it often this week to remind you of the truth of your being. So together, let's say, this day, as I do every day, I encourage my thoughts to center upon the idea that pure spirit freely flows through me into expression. Now take a couple of deep breaths and allow this music to take you into a silent place, followed by this morning's invocation.
words of Dr. Holmes flood my mind and spirit this morning as I begin with these words. I know that within my life there is a power which is perfect, complete, divine. It was never born and cannot die for it lives and is God. Within that power is the wholeness, peace, prosperity of life. This life is health it is abundance, it is love. There is one life, and it is the life of God. And this is my life now. And as I speak these words, the words of God, I know that this life that is my life is the life of everyone present, everyone on this planet within the sound of my voice and beyond. For there is only one thing going on, it is God, it is love, it is wisdom, beauty, power, peace, clarity, and calm. It is that very grace of the divine that moves in through and as each one of us, doing that which is ours to do on this planet, to be here now, to be here right now in this present moment as it becomes an eternal ever-expanding moment. Creating, uncreating, creating, giving, receiving, giving, receiving the law that always brings all of us together, allowing us, using us, encouraging, inviting, and always loving. So I know that today, at this Center for Spiritual Greater Las Vegas, that the day unfolds magically. The presence of the divine is seen in everyone's eyes. God looking at God. So as I know for myself, I know for each one of us that we experience creative self-expression beyond our wildest imaginations. We enjoy the divine birthright that is radiant health, for it is ours right here and right now. Our relationships are filled with love and integrity at every level. And that abundance comes to us in ways we can't even begin to understand. But we are all divinely prosperous because we are spirit in form right here and right now. And on this gentle breeze, these words go right back out into the universe around the world being fulfilled in physical form right here, right now. And so it is.
From a distance, the world looks blue and green, and the snow-capped mountains white. From a distance, the ocean meets the stream, and the eagles take to flight. From a distance, the It's the voice of hope, it's the voice of peace, it's the voice of every man. From a distance, we all had enough, and there's no one here is in need. And there are no guns, no bombs, and no disease, no hungry mouths to feed. From a distance, we are instruments marching in a common band, playing. From a distance From a distance You my friend, even though we are at war. From a distance, I just cannot comprehend what all this fighting is for. It's the love of love, it's the heart of every man. It's the hope of hope, it's the love of love, it's the heart of every man. God is watching us, God is watching. <laughs> Nikki, nice to meet you. Thank you. It's our pleasure. I happen to have an inside track on her. She happens to work with Corey, so she, I don't know why, I, yeah, I don't know why it happened that you started singing in the office one day, but he came home and he said, she started singing this song and I started crying instantly. <laughs> we gotta have her. So, anyway, 
Great to have you here. Thank you. Yeah. Ah. So are you having a safe and sane holiday weekend so far? Yes. No. Who <laughs> sounded no? <laughs> you're having an unsafe and insane? Is that what you mean? Or you're just not having a holiday weekend? Well, I got to tell you, uh, we knew we lived in a beautiful home and in a perfect location and all of that. But for the 4th of July, there is nothing better. So next year, you're all invited to our rooftop deck. I think, yeah. Um, so you got to remind me when we get closer to it because seriously, it is... It is unbelievable. It, I mean, we were surrounded on 360 neighbor, with neighborhood fireworks. I didn't care about the station casinos or I couldn't even tell what was going on on the strip because all around us, the neighbors must have gone to Pahrump because, <laughs> <laughs> wow, they were just remarkable. And the, the best news of all, our puppies are fine with it. <laughs> yeah. We held them and they just watched with us. They were like, whoo, wow. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, so, but that's not what my message is about. That is what my message is about. It is a question that I think actually is pretty broad and pretty deep. What price freedom? Yeah. Um, and uh, so I want to begin, first of all, with freedom that I'm calling external freedom, the freedom that we're granted as citizens of the United States of America, the freedoms that a government can grant or promise or guarantee. And most of us are aware at least in some degree, I think, of the price that many, many countless thousands, if not millions of people have paid over the centuries for us to attain, first of all, those freedoms and then to maintain them and then even to expand them over the centuries. I think that, you know, the price has been steep for many and um, we are aware of that in some degree and there have been there were, like, before the revolution, there were countless skirmishes, and then the revolution happened, and then after that, there were more uh, disagreements and wars, and then a civil war that, that pretty much tore us apart, and evidently some pieces of that are still not ba put back together, um, which is interesting, at least. Uh, but then after that, new centuries and new wars and many more uh, begun and fought, even after what was called the war to end all wars. Most of us, I don't think any of us were alive then, but World War I, right? The war to end all wars. After that, more war, <laughs> more fights, more people dead or wounded, lives damaged or lost or destroyed in some way. Those have been happening ever since then as well. And then as we moved into further into the 20th century, really, civil rights, women's rights, civil rights from various uh, factions and people who we're all in the quest of this thing that every human heart desires in some degree, and that's freedom. We're in the quest for that. And in this, these stages of our evolution, war has been a part of how that gets realized in some way. I was really struck um, by a piece that I found. I found a couple of pieces from Ernest Holmes, which is the Dr. Holmes that, that Sabrina mentioned in her invocation. It wasn't Dr. Sherlock Holmes. It was Dr. Ernest Holmes. Um, and I found this in a place that is online and physical called the Science of Mind Library and Archives. And they have a lot of free ebooks from Ernest Holmes, old writings of his and that kind of stuff. Um, and they say that this one is not dated. So they say the date is unknown of this. But when I read the whole piece, I was like, this is obviously written after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, but before our nuclear response, retaliation. So it was in that time in between. And it's fascinating to me, the spiritual perspective that he puts on it and its relevance for me this morning in leading me to the heart of my message. And so he titled this piece, The New Freedom. And uh, so this message in its entirety today is brought to you by me and by Dr. Ernest Holmes because I have some juicy tidbits to share with you from him. So I'll be channeling Ernest Holmes here uh, for a little while. He wrote, every man is born free, but freedom does not mean license. We are passing through the greatest revolution socially, politically, economically, nationally, and internationally that the world has ever seen. It is certain that as a result of this, that ideology, whatever you call it, whether you call it political or social or economic, that ideology which the nearest serves the cosmic purpose will win. There isn't any question about that. That is why I haven't the slightest doubt about the triumph of our arms. That ideology which is the nearest like God is just as certain to win in this struggle as that two and two is certain to be four tomorrow morning. 
It has never yet failed in history. It never will because it is a power against which there is no resistance. Then he quotes scripture. I, I will work, saith the Lord, and who shall hinder me? I will work, and who shall hinder me? He wrote, I do not believe in holy wars, but I do believe in holy causes. And we are holy, W-H-O, we are wholly right in our cause. There isn't any question about it. But why are we right? He says, why are we right? Because we wish nothing but the final peace, prosperity, unity, cooperation, sanity, and justice of the world. That is the only reason we are right. Not because we can make more boats and faster than they can sink them, not because we can make more tanks and more airplanes. That isn't the reason why we are right. It is because we are right that we can make more planes and boats and tanks. Never put the cart before the horse. If there ever was a nation on earth conceived in liberty and born with a cosmic idea of freedom, it is our nation. I do not believe in superior races. An American is not superior to a Dutchman. But he, as a collective group, sees something that no other collective group has ever seen. There can be no question about that to a student of history, and that is why the impulsion of the creative genius of the universe itself presses against this country. That is what brought us into the war. It wasn't that God loves to have people fight. It wasn't God going to war. God does not have wars. That nation which is more nearly right, and no nation is 100% right, that nation which is more nearly right will take precedence over everything else. And so in his way, he was stating what many people of other faiths have said, that God is on our side. But, but how he was couching it, and that's what I appreciate most about it, is he's saying that what is more nearly right, what is more nearly on the side of, of universal justice and freedom and truth and peace shall prevail. And of course, we did prevail then. But that was the 1940s, and since then there have been more wars, more struggles, more lives completely altered. And so what those struggles have been since then, and especially as I mentioned earlier, the civil rights uh, struggles and fights that have gone on is, is done within one nation and among people who understand that they're supposed to be free but haven't yet experienced it. They don't have a felt sense of that freedom. And so then there's more war. You know, I was I, in, in the lead up to July 4th and, and in just seeing what was going on in the country, um, a movement that began really in earnest last year pretty quietly but is picking up steam this year um, is really an unexpected and for me in a way a very heartbreaking piece of the price of freedom. Some of you may have seen this, some of you may be participating in it. There are these signs that are available now and it simply says, a combat veteran lives here. Please be courteous with fireworks. This is not saying don't use them. What, what I'm finding out is that those veterans with PTSD can often have a major event triggered by unexpected sounds of warfare. And sure, on the 4th of July, the night before, maybe even the night after, they might expect this. But it's the unexpected ones. I mean, we had hours and hours of it last night. And then at 3 this morning, there were like five, bang, 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 bang. I'm assuming it was firecrackers. Um, Unexpected, right? Those are the kind of things that it's just sort of like as we evolve and as we understand the, the price that these people who are laying their lives down for us to continue to enjoy these freedoms, the price that they have to pay even extends to our celebrating our independence. And it's not about squashing our freedom of expression. It's saying, let's just have some compassion. Let's understand that some people are paying a price that is not something most of us can ever understand. And so all of that is, is some of the price of the freedom that I'm calling the external freedoms that we enjoy, that a government perhaps can bestow upon its citizens. But then we want to move into the idea of true freedom. What about the truth of freedom that is everyone's everywhere, no matter where they live, no matter who they are? This idea of spiritual freedom. In that passage that I read from Ernest Holmes, he talked about rightness, the rightness of of a, a nation or a person or people. And when I thought about rightness, I was like, where does that rightness originate? Anything that we want to stand in as truth, anything that we want to, to hold as the truth of all being and therefore the truth of our being, it happens inside. It starts within. The idea of rightness begins within. And so there is a transition that we must make 
if we're looking at freedom that's out there, that's, that's available to us as Americans, that's available in this country or, or somewhere else in the world, a transition between the freedom that's out there and the freedom that is in here has to be predicated upon one thing. And so if we think about it, and Ernest Holmes writes about it throughout his entire life, where is that ultimate idea of liberty, of freedom? What is it grounded upon? It can only be grounded upon one truth, and that is the allness of God. Oneness. That there is only one here, as Sabrina suggested in her invocation. There is only one. God is all there is. In the beginning was God. Nothing else. God plus nothing else equals God, right? The, cre the universe created from the very substance of the divine. God is all there is. God is all I am. God is all you are. We don't always know that. We don't always remember that. We don't always act like that. But that is ultimately the truth. And that is the only place that freedom can be accessed. True freedom, liberty, the spiritual idea of freedom. Because as I live and as I move and as I act and as I express in the world, the energy that that is goes out from me and it encounters other people. It encounters other energies and consciousness and it returns to me magnified because there is only one here. There is no place else for it to go. And so the idea that I give out this energy and it comes back to me ought to give me pause when I am acting as less than God, right? Because it comes back to me. Some more ideas from Ernest Holmes on this message that he either wrote or spoke on the very brink of our entering the Second World War. He said there are but two fundamental principles in nature. One is unity of the whole, and the next is variety. The diversity, the manifold expressions of that unity. So we don't believe that we are individual expressions of God because we're connected. We are individualized. So there are multiple expressions of unity, and that's beautiful. It's wonderful. He said, any system of thought, religious, political, economic, that contradicts either one or both of those is as certain to fall as that tomorrow is certain to follow today. Now that means that freedom, liberty, is not License. Liberty means providing the greatest possible chance for every person to be free, giving them the greatest background for freedom, and also permitting them to go ahead and enjoy as much of that freedom as they can. So to have the, the, the ability, liberty is the ability to discover the freedom that we are, that is our birthright as humanity, and then the freedom to enjoy it as much as we can possibly embody and embrace it. But then he, a little later in that, in that piece, he writes kind of about the price that we must pay as we begin to explore our spiritual freedom that comes from knowing our unity with the whole. He said, we are free as we exercise our freedom under law. But again, liberty is not license. I am free to hate. But it is inevitable that if I hate, my hatred will destroy me. My freedom to hate is conditioned by the inevitability that in the long run, nothing can efface the nature of God and of spirit. But if my freedom is exercised to love, there is no limit to its expansion. Hence, automatically, the power in its inevitability crushes us when we go in the line of destruction. That lesson teaches us to go back to construction, to conscious or unconscious cooperation. In other words, cooperation with the way God works. That freedom which we must have must not be surrendered in any way. It belongs to the self, and it should work in conscious cooperation with all other selves. Therefore, while we would harm, while we would hate, while we would hurt, we are playing with broken images, and our playthings do not work. <laughs> the toys of hate and destruction do not work because ultimately they get turned on ourselves. And that is both a call for the way it works and a call for our evolution, beyond the idea of settling differences and disagreements with violence. But what it says to us in a personal way is that that is the price that we must pay for discovering our spiritual freedom, the working of the law, the inexorable and inevitable law of cause and effect, of what goes around comes around. So when I, in my unconscious habits of behavior, have an angry word or two to say about another driver on the freeway, this is hypothetical. When that happens, 
it does not help me to feel better. I checked that this week. I was like, wow, that didn't help me feel better. I mean, hypothetically, I did that. And what does it do? It continues the energy of anger and separation. There's a song that we used to sing called Let There Be Peace on Earth and Let It Begin With Me. It is a simple and profound and powerful and difficult truth to practice. Where in my life am I not at peace? Where within myself am I not at peace? I don't need to look overseas to the Middle East or any other place where there's, where there's uh, conflict going on in the world because I've got it right here. So that is the price that we pay for discovering this ultimate and infinite freedom that is so magnificent in its possibility and scope. And yet we must recognize that that idea, that oneness, and that what I do to another, I do to myself, that is the bridge that we build from the outer experience of freedom to an inner realization of it, to an inner realization of true liberty. Another place Holmes describes liberty, this idea of freedom and spiritual truth of liberty is the awareness of and the acceptance of the divine possibilities for our lives. And then be being free of those limiting things, free of bondage or lack or fear or want or uncertainty, pain, disease, poverty, things like that. To be free of those things is a part of this spiritual idea of liberty. So then I get to the, the heart of what what this message is about because Ernest Holmes provided a map. I found another writing, another talk that actually that he gave. And this talk was at the Wiltern Theater, which still stands in Los Angeles. It's a Wiltern Theater. And it was given um, July 4th, 1937, which was 78 years ago yesterday. And it's amazing to me when I, when I see things that he spoke, how really timeless a lot of it is. Because it is based in truth, in spiritual Unity. So this talk was called The Spiritual Meaning of Freedom. And so he's really centering this on the idea of Independence Day. And he said, the great demand in the world today is for a sense of security, of freedom, and of liberty. But we must be very certain that we do not swap one image of bondage for another. I have read a large part of the religious and philosophic history of the world, and I have noticed that almost invariably, when the world traded one kind of religion for another, it didn't get a good deal. The Pilgrim Fathers who came to the shores of New England came to worship God in their own way. But the moment they got here, everybody in the colony worshiped God in the way that the strong-minded members of that colony decided was the way to worship God. That was not freedom. He says true freedom, true liberty has something cosmic behind it. If the time has come, this is where it's so, it's right now science that he's talking about 78 years ago. He says if the time has come, that modern science has proved that we cannot move a piece of paper without changing the balance of the entire physical universe. If we have come to the place where we know that the stuff of which our physical bodies are made is the same stuff of which the planets are made. If we have come to the place where such a profound unity is maintained that physicists believe that there is no such thing as disunity in the physical world, then we can easily see what the great spiritual leaders of the ages meant when they told us of that greater unity in which we all live and move and have our being, and that the idea of freedom itself is tied up with the true concept of the unity of good. If our nature is one, if God is one, and we know that God must be one for the universe cannot be divided against itself, then we are all tied into an indivisible unity. We shall have to get back to this unity to find the meaning of freedom. Nothing in any part of this cosmic whole could be considered freedom that would destroy the liberty of some other part of it. That would be self-destruction, would it not? As Jesus pointed out 2,000 years ago, that would be a kingdom divided against itself. The kingdom of God is one kingdom. So we know that true liberty must spring from true unity. So again and again, 1937 and probably sometime in the early 1940s, he is saying the same thing. True unity is the only way that we shall experience the ultimate in spiritual freedom. So I don't know if, if the implication of that, the profound implication of that sinks in until one just sits with it for a moment. I sit with this idea of true unity, of proclaiming it and then practicing it. 
And I realize that I have to challenge myself to get there. Really challenge myself. When I see demonstrations in favor of Confederate flags, I am very challenged to proclaim their unity with me. <laughs> and yet we are all one. On a more personal note, when I hear preachers and politicians and talk show hosts and anonymous ranters on the internet talking about how I shouldn't have certain freedoms that most other people have simply because of who I love, then it is a very difficult thing for me in the current evolution of my consciousness to proclaim my unity with them. It is a hard thing for me to do. And frankly, it's not really at the top of my to-do list. <laughs> Until now. Until now. Because I read these pieces from our founder, from Ernest Holmes, who says, true unity is the only way to experience freedom and liberty. Then I realize I got to go there. And I got to get there. And then I got to stay there. That is not necessarily an easy thing. Because of the built-in structures and systems and habits of being and thinking that I have developed over my years. And yet I realize I have to do that. I have to do that, not as Ernest Holmes says, so that I may serve as a doormat for those who would use me that way. No, it is so that I may be shining a light of truth, the light of unity, and yes, of love, so that inch by inch and mind by mind, I am helping humanity's awakening to its spiritual magnificence, which is part of our denomination's mission. I am assisting in that endeavor. I am assisting in humanity's breaking free of its chains of bondage. That's my task, and it begins right where I am because I have to heal that within me before I can hope to experience it in the rest of the world. And so this idea of, of, of standing for that, of true unity, um, has a musical uh, coda and inspiration that we're going to move into. Um, and as we begin to play that music and we move toward that, I want to share another piece from this spiritual meaning of freedom from Ernest Holmes because this is relevant to today, it's relevant to this country, and it's relevant to this idea of practicing true unity. He said, I believe that the true spirit of democracy is a spiritual conception where there is freedom, liberty without license, and a flexibility that makes evolution possible on the foundation of freedom. As we enter into the spirit of the meaning of Independence Day, the day when liberty symbolically was conceived, the day when freedom objectively in our country was announced, we should think of it not merely as a political system or form of government, but we should think of it as a spiritual conception, an idea in the divine mind itself, taking form in human experience. We should learn that liberty, and in loving the idea, we should learn to tenderly and prayerfully handle the embodiment of that idea and nourish it always to greater strength. We should really conceive again the great spiritual conception of that rugged man of God who said that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. It can start across the country or start with someone else The freedom that you're seeking Begins with yourself And just think of what it could be like If we could all unite And walk hand in hand together Instead of letting go To fight I stand for love, I stand for truth, I stand for hope, I stand for you, for you I stand for peace, for peace I sing in all the world, let 
walk around together destined to be alone but if we could only realize the truth that's in our core you see it matters not what you're against but what you're standing for So yes, you stand for love and for truth and for peace and for you and for me, and that's what we got to do. You know, that is such a brilliant piece that talks about that, that it starts within. And how can we do that as people of faith? We do that through and by our faith, through the tenets that we believe and through the words and, and encouragement of Ernest Holmes, who actually gave us a blueprint for it. I want one more little piece. It's much shorter. And this gives us the blueprint. It gives us the practice for how we can do that very thing, how we can stand for truth and for peace and for love and for hope and for each other. He said, it will call for the united thought of all people, a great spiritual awakening. We shall not be worthy if we leave out the right idea of God, not a God of people or religions, but a God of love in whom we live and move and have our being. It is then set before us, individually and collectively, something the world has never known, Then he says, do not despair and say, after this, there must be impoverishment and hardships. No, that is nonsense. If the faith is firm, the conviction strong, the intuition calm, and the will purposeful, then everything will fall in line. There's four elements. There's four things that we can choose right now. A firm faith, strong conviction, calm intuition, and purposeful will. So when I saw that blueprint from Ernest Holmes, that's what I am going to do. I am hereby committing myself to those things, to stand firm and strong and calm and purposeful in the face of bigotry and hatred and racism and sexism, turning away from anything that I might be tempted in my smaller self to label as evidence to the contrary and instead affirm and insist on oneness. Will you join me? Any of those, any of those, 
Any one of them is a step in the right direction. If this collection of people did all four of these and just stood with a strong faith, a firm faith, a strong conviction, a calm intuition, and a purposeful will toward unity, you have no idea the impact that we could have on our world. But it begins right here with each and every one of us. We are the ones that must stand for that. We are the ones that must stand in some way out in the world. Right here, you can get the, the, the support the encouragement and, the, and the, the kudos to practice it right here with everybody that you encounter. And then out in the world where we live most of our lives, we have that impact then. The world can be transformed and we will experience a freedom unlike anything we have ever experienced before if we remember that we are all one. The price is precious. It's a steep price, but it is oh so worth it. Join me. Namaste. Thank you. Okay, so one of the ways that we can feel more equipped for that is through prayer, through our form of prayer, this affirmative prayer that says, God is all there is, and if that is so, then I am one with that. I invite you to prepare yourself to receive prayer in this moment as I invite our ministry of prayer to stand. Our ministry of prayer is staffed by the practitioners and ministers who call this place home, and uh, we are pledged every single day to enter into treatment, into affirmative prayer on your behalf. As a part of this congregation and community, I want you to understand that as we surround you this morning, every single day, in our own way and, and, and in our own styles, we are knowing that God is active in you and in your life, that right action is the truth of your experience always. If you have a specific way that we may support you silently in prayer, you can write it on your connection card on the back there. You can fill out a, a card in the lobby and drop it in the box there. You can write an email to our ministry of prayer. We will support you for a couple weeks specifically in that way. And of course, you can receive prayer after the service from one of our ministry of prayer. Uh, and just know that in general, you are held in love and light every single day. So take in a deep breath with me. And allow your eyes to close. And open yourself up to receiving this movement of truth, this movement of understanding that there is just one here. It is the very heart of what we believe, that God is all there is in the beginning. God created. In the beginning was the Word. It was God. So before the universe came into form, God existed, formless and timeless. And that is still the truth of God. God exists outside of all form and time. And yet, from within that formless and timeless, this universe came into being. It was made of the substance of God. There was nothing else. And so that which created this universe is still the truth of every aspect of it. Everything that is in form, everything that is invisible, everything that is energy, everything that is in potential, it all comes from that one that I call God. And so the vast multiplicity of form that this universe exhibits does not deny the unity of God, it confirms it. One. One life, one energy, one creator, and one creation. In this space of absolute truth, there can be no other. Even when we are tempted in our smaller moments to identify something other than God, there can be nothing other than God. Even in those places where it is not realized in any tangible way, God is still the truth. So I place my awareness there. I insist upon it here. And I know that it's all that I am. It's all that we are. It's all that this place is. It's all that this planet is. It is the truth of everyone we know. It is the truth of all we encounter. And here in this moment of spiritual realization, we can affirm it as the truth. That truth that never changes. That truth that is always the truth, even when we're not aware of it. How blessed that is, how blessed we are. To have that truth be our truth always. And how grateful I am to live in a country that says yes to this idea. I mean, maybe not explicitly, but it gives me the freedom to know it, to practice it, to believe it, and to shine it in ways that are beneficial to my world. I'm so grateful for that. For this beautiful moment, for this beautiful center, for its members and its friends, its ministries and its programs. I give thanks for all centers for spiritual living worldwide, and I give thanks for all houses of worship, all places that turn their attention to the divine, because I recognize that the God that we all believe in is some part of that infinite God that is. So I expand my awareness right here and right now, and I recognize that in this 
weekend of celebrating freedom and independence, we have that spiritual reality, that spiritual truth of liberty, where we are free to discover the infinite possibilities of our life and then live them more fully every single day as we awaken to that which is magnificent about our spirit. I am so grateful for that. So I give thanks for this moment. I give thanks for this time of sharing in the truth. And I give thanks for the awareness that God is all there is. And so I let go. I release my word and this prayer into the law of God that always knows it's true, that always says yes to a consciousness that embraces it. And it is now freer than ever before to come forth in our awareness, in our experience, because we are saying yes to a higher truth. We let go of anything to the contrary. We let go of small limiting beliefs and ideas. We simply embrace the truth that we are one. We let it go completely. It is done right here and right now, and so it is. You gotta move back here. <laughs> oh, for those of you who hadn't noticed, I'm wearing red and blue, but I have white on. As Teresa said, that is so peewee of you. Uh, anyway. <laughs> anyway, shut up. All right. Uh, <laughs> settle down. We still have some serious work to do. Uh, yeah, that's our offering time. Yeah, we take that very seriously. No, really, we do. Um, and it's a joyful expression because, again, God is all there is. And we're going to enter into a time of giving of our tithes and offerings with the understanding that as we give, we are giving of the substance of the divine. Now, that's true with any giving of anything that you do in your life. All of it is divine energy. It just takes different forms. Again, there is only one, but it's multiplicity of form and experience. This is another way that we can express it. We can express it in gratitude for this center, for its impact on our own lives and then the lives of the people that it serves and that are called to it. Our children, our outreach, we tithe 10% of what we receive to our global denomination of Centers for Spiritual Living so that what you give locally has a global effect and we're grateful for that. If you give electronically, if you auto tithe, if you go to the bookstore and, and put miles on your credit card for us, that's terrific. Use the connection card that you have uh, this morning to symbolize that form of giving and use that to bless the gift as you give it. The rest of us who are giving physically this morning will take our gift, regard it with gratitude that you are able to give it this morning, and then give a silent blessing of it before we say an affirmation about it on the way. And then would you, oh, would our prosperity acceptors please come forward? Or are you starting from the back today? Either way, it works, right? All right, so please say after me, I give this freely and with joy. I affirm that God is my source, that his supply is infinite, <laughs> and I give with that awareness, knowing that it returns to me abundantly. 
And so it is. I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to be. Everybody's searching for a hero. People need someone to look up to. I never found anyone who fulfilled my need. A lonely place to be. So I learned to depend on me. I just said it long ago, never to want. Children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Give them a sense of pride to make it easier. Let the children's laughter remind us how we used to. I decided long ago never to walk in anyone's shadows. If I fail, if I succeed, at least I live as I believe. No matter what they take from me, they can't take away my dignity. Because the greatest love of all.
Wow. Okay, so my understanding, Nikki, is that you do not have any CDs to sell, though, right? But you're working on one? No, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should. <laughs> she sings at her church, so we can't really get her too much, but it's great to have you here this morning. Thank you. However, not however, but Darren is with us, and he does have CDs available, and his music is awesome, so thank you for that. He'll be out in the lobby as well, so that's good. So this week, remember to build your faith, your conviction, your intuition, and your will toward peace and freedom greater than any that you've ever known. As you leave this morning, stop by for prayer first down here at the front of the room or in our prayer room. Go to the bookstore for anything that you would like to pick up with books or gifts, and then join us in the great room for fellowship. We're going to have a benediction if you would please stand. You can turn in your connection cards and pens as you leave the doors this morning. Make a connection on either side of you if you can, and please say after me, today I say yes to an expanded life. I give thanks for the freedoms I enjoy and for the freedom that is everyone's divine birthright. This week I commit to giving and to living more and more every day. I am so blessed and so it is.